Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries in regards to the earliest light in the universe. And specifically, a completely new map that essentially presents us with the highest resolution available for the so-called cosmic microwave background, with the older map visible right here. And by itself, for cosmologists, this is actually a huge achievement and will most likely result in a lot of new studies coming out in the next few years that essentially try to assess the universe, and specifically the early universe, through these new extremely accurate observations now available to everyone. But at the same time, scientists have also discovered something somewhat surprising that we're going to be discussing in a few minutes. Or the first, let's go through some of the history just so that you know what we're actually discussing. And here the story starts in 1965. Here the work by Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson involved this somewhat bizarre antenna known as the Holmdel Horn Antenna that completely by accident started to discover an unusual buzz that seemed to be occurring everywhere. And by the way, a few years back, this antenna was almost destroyed when someone tried to basically turn this land into some kind of a private condo. But a lot of people, including myself and subscribers of this channel, petitioned against it and so far looks like we actually won. I mean, I'm not sure what's going to happen in the future, but this should not become a condo. Anyway, this discovery in 1965, though at first unusual, turned out to actually match a lot of predictions from several decades prior, which you can learn about in some of the videos in the description, that basically all confirmed the idea that we now refer to as the Big Bang Theory. And this was the biggest evidence. It essentially confirmed that billions of years ago, the universe was extremely hot and essentially opaque. But as it cooled down, once it reached a certain temperature, finally the light could get through, with everything essentially glowing in this extremely hot first light. But because this happened approximately 380,000 years following the Big Bang, as the light traveled across the universe, and as the universe expanded, this light cooled down, or in more scientific terms, increased in wavelength. And 13.8 billion years later, the wavelength stretched so much that it was now approximately 2 millimeters, which was equivalent to a temperature of about 2.7 Kelvin or microwave radiation, which is roughly around 160 gigahertz. But despite this grandiose discovery, it actually took a couple of decades to finally come up with some of the first attempts to basically observe this in every single direction. And this was the first space-based mission. This was known as COBE, Cosmic Background Explorer, a satellite launched by NASA in 1989 that functioned for approximately seven years. And during this time, it basically confirmed that this radiation seems to be everywhere, but it also seems to be just a little bit variable. Basically here it confirmed what the scientists refer to as large-scale anisotropies. But because the technology here was still being developed, the resolution was actually not very good. And so NASA followed this up with another satellite known as WMAP, which launched five years later in 2001 and it suddenly revealed the universe, or revealed this early light, with a lot more variability. Here it showed us a lot more temperature in homogeneity, basically confirming a lot of previous assumptions and a lot of cosmological theories. It showed us the early gas all over the place, as it started to accumulate into thicker chunks and started to produce various overdensities. So basically it was not smooth, not uniform, and explained how the universe formed into what we know today. But as always, European Space Agency basically said, hold my beer, uh, my probably Belgian beer. And just like with a lot of other space telescopes, like for example Gaia, it produced overwhelming results that surprised everyone. This was the famous Planck telescope, or specifically Planck Surveyor, launched in 2009, and after four years, it produced the most accurate map we've ever had. The map that's basically been used in every single study ever since. But obviously this was not the end. As a matter of fact, several other missions have been actually conducted here on Earth by using even larger microwave detectors compared to the ones inside these probes. And as a matter of fact, the main advantage for these probes compared to an Earth-based telescope is that here these space-based observations were actually able to map absolutely everything. Whereas on Earth, even though we can produce higher resolution, Generally, you can only map approximately half the night skies, usually either the southern hemisphere or the northern hemisphere. And actually quite a few missions have been doing this for a very long time, with one major one finally releasing its first results. Now we're actually going to be discussing other missions, including the ones in Antarctica and the future ones, including the ones in China, in videos later on, so make sure to subscribe if you want to learn more. But basically now, we finally get the most accurate data ever from the telescope known as ACT, Atacama Cosmological Telescope. 
and this telescope, as the name implies, is located in Chile and was basically able to produce an incredible map with five times more resolution than ever before. The finest ever map of the cosmic microwave background. But once again, because this is on Earth, it only produced half of the map, so essentially only the southern hemisphere. And here it used this, this bizarre looking telescope that was built back in 2007 and received some of the major upgrades in 2013 and 2016. And though it's been conducting observations ever since, it was actually shut down in 2022 due to budget cuts in the National Science Foundation. Nevertheless, despite of this, it was still able to release all of its data, which you can essentially now explore by yourself in several studies in the description. Here, the observations by ACT provide incredible resolution, very high sensitivity, and most importantly, it's actually able to measure polarization directly. Or I guess to be more specific, the orientation of these light waves, which shows us how these waves evolved over time as they traveled across the universe. And here it's really the polarization that's most likely going to be leading to some of the major discoveries. And that's because the polarization in these images shows us a very detailed movement of hydrogen and helium during these first moments in the universe. Or in other words, in previous images from previous observations, we could only see where gas was as a kind of a still image. Here though, this polarization basically shows us how this gas is moving. So in some sense, you can actually imagine this as a moving picture, or I guess as a video, as opposed to just a still picture. And this movement is super important in order to show us how gravity used to pull things around and how everything interacted and assembled 380,000 years following the Big Bang. And as a result of these early observations, we already have some major conclusions, which, as I mentioned, were to some extent kind of surprising, but also a little bit disappointing. So here's what we have. At first, before this data was officially released, Scientists were hoping to discover the anomalies that could potentially finally solve the mysterious Hubble tension or the bizarre observations with dark energy and maybe even find clues for dark matter. In other words, they were actually hoping to find anomalies for the famous Lambda CDM model, the model that currently describes the universe as we know it. And here maybe they could also discover the true age of the universe or possibly deviations from the Hubble constant. Despite of this, these ridiculously accurate observations, instead of contradicting anything, seem to have actually confirmed all of it. The Lambda CDM model was confirmed with extreme accuracy, as was the Hubble constant and the age of the universe. In other words, the surprise here, or I guess the disappointment here, was that it provided absolutely no clues to a lot of these cosmic mysteries we've discussed in some of the previous videos and in a video that should be coming out really soon about the mysteries of dark energy. And this was actually from a completely different observation based on the nearby universe using the instrument known as DASI. The link about this should be in the description. And so here the Hubble constant was confirmed to be about 68 kilometers per second per megaparsec, the universe was confirmed to be 13.8 billion years old, and more importantly, it dramatically increased the precision, implying that previous observations were extremely accurate too. And though a lot of scientists were hoping or expecting to see something that was going to be a little bit different and possibly something that would have been previously invisible, instead, literally everything observed was exactly how it was in predictions from over 10 years ago. Absolutely no unexplained phenomena in these observations. And no solution to the Hubble tension or to the mysteries of dark energy. But this is also a really important discovery because here this is a confirmation that the early universe is not really responsible for a lot of these problems we're seeing today, including the unusual deviations in dark energy and even bizarre mysteries of dark matter. Here this kind of confirms that the early universe was really kind of simple and explainable with previous models, which actually rules out a lot of different theories and propositions that try to provide alternative explanations. Basically here, Lambda CDM, at least for now, seems to prevail. But I guess here, let's also briefly discuss exactly what the scientists think we're looking at and what you're actually seeing. First of all, this is an enormous image. Here you're actually looking at something 50 billion light years away from us, or basically a kind of a sphere 50 billion light years in radius. So technically this is an enormous object. But because of the accuracy of these images, we can now even see individual galaxies and individual objects as slight over densities in a lot of parts of this image. But because most of the things we're seeing is basically just gas and essentially just pure energy, technically we're seeing something equivalent to 1900 zeta suns or zeta solar masses 
of mass and energy. Although physically we can actually only detect only a small percentage. Basically here approximately a quarter or 500 zeta suns is the mysterious dark matter, about 1300 is the mysterious dark energy or vacuum energy, and only about 100 is the matter that we're made out of. But in terms of these patches, what you're actually mostly seeing is hydrogen and helium. Three quarters is hydrogen, one quarter is helium. With an extremely small amount being neutrinos which are invisible. And intriguingly, helium was actually produced along with hydrogen in the first three minutes of the existence of the universe. Whereas all of the other stuff is actually not visible here yet, because things like carbon and oxygen were not created yet. This will form millions of years later as a result of various supernova. And so every one of these dense regions is essentially hydrogen-helium clouds millions of light years across. And eventually this will form various galaxies. And so here by observing these super precise images, scientists have also confirmed something else super important. The overall expansion of the universe, based on the apparent size of these ripples inside these images, seems to indeed confirm the universe is 13.8 billion years old with the uncertainty of only 0.1%. And so a lot of alternative explanations that try to explain a universe that's 26 billion years old or even older seem to be almost definitively incorrect. At least they would not be able to explain these recent observations of the oldest light in the universe. But because this has just been released, we don't really have a lot of other discoveries or a lot of additional studies yet. And more importantly, we only have half the hemisphere. We're still missing the north. And right now, no telescope in the Northern Hemisphere is being planned for the next few years. However, we might have another telescope in the South. As a matter of fact, it's being built right now. This is the Simons Observatory by the Simons Foundation that's most likely going to be replacing ACT in the next few years and will very likely start its mission in the next few years. Now, the telescope is technically already operational, but not fully functional, and it even captured its first image in 2025 of this. Uh, take a guess what this is. Yeah, this is Mars. This was obviously a demonstration, but in February of 2025, it achieved its first light. And so in the next five to six years, we might actually get another image that's even more accurate, that might be able to show us the cosmic microwave background in even more detail. But chances are, it's not going to be breaking any cosmological mysteries, mostly because the observations from this recent study definitively confirm a lot of models and seem to also imply that our understanding of the early universe is extremely good. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with modern predictions. And whatever is happening with the modern cosmology crisis seems to be the result of the universe in the last few billions of years. So I guess this is more of a recent crisis. And we'll actually discuss this really soon in the video that's coming out in the next few days. So subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.